mentioned that we uh, heard about this uh, uh, two day, in the last two days. I think that the issue of food uh, waste reduction is the direct benefit for cities. When we're talking about health, when we're talking about uh, nutrition, sustainable nutrition to the citizens of the city, the city does gain, uh, uh, you know, some uh, benefits from it, but I think that uh, reducing food... Hmm? This one is better, okay. Uh, so, uh, the direct benefits of reducing food waste is the issue and is the topic of our uh, session today. I would like to uh, invite our uh, first uh, speaker, uh, Tuan Timmermans. Uh, he is uh, uh, from the is a manager of uh, uh, program manager of sustainable food chains at the Wageningen University in the Netherlands. He is also coordinating. He was coordinating uh, uh, the uh, uh, fusions. Uh, um, project, and now he is uh, coordinating the Refresh uh, project, uh, and he will talk about applied research for reducing food waste. So, Tuan, the floor is yours. I have to be very strict. The time is running out there, and you will have the flashes, and everybody is very keen for the uh, time <laughs> frame. Okay, th thank you. Is it working? Yeah. Is it on or? Yeah, it's on now. Thank you. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here and I have about 15 minutes to share some of our insights, but I will focus mostly on, of course, the role of the cities. Because, to my opinion, cities are crucial as a mechanism to work on reducing food waste, because food waste is, is a global concern. But we can only solve it if we look for what are the local cultures, where is the energy, where can we develop the coalitions of the willing and see it as also a learning environment to test best practices as living laboratories and see what works and how can we make a sustainable change and a better food system locally. But it starts from thinking big. We all know the figures about food waste. According to the FAO estimates, one third of the food that's produced Globally, it's lost or wasted somewhere in the supply chain. There's a new SDG set in 2015 that's aiming for 50% reduction of food waste around the world. And that, with all type of different drivers, have given this topic a huge momentum. I've been working on it for about 18 years. In the beginning, nobody was interested in food waste. But we knew the figures already at that time, and it was a huge issue. But a lot has changed, a lot of new drivers came into the area and we just cannot afford, if we look at resource efficiency, if we look at what the, the, yeah, the negative impact for, this, for society are, both on the social and the ecological end, to do something about it. But we need to work on the practical solutions also, not to forget it. We don't need one solution, there's no silver bullets, we need thousands of solutions, but, as I always say, you need to put it into a holistic framework. Not focus on the symptoms, on the symbols, but look how holistically systemic we can eradicate this issue and reduce food waste with 50%. That means we can only do that, in my opinion, if we have an, an ecosystem where there is innovators, where there's companies who can use their skill for impact, and there's the role of the national government, but also of the local municipalities or the regions to make things happen. Here's an example of how we found a way that 18 social innovators that all produce products, good products, tasty products from food that would otherwise have been wasted. How we have brought them together under one umbrella called food waste is delicious or food waste is precious and giving access to the market because that's what is also needed. If you want to become from startups to scale up, you need to be able to use the momentum and the ecosystem to get access to the normal people. And that's where cities can be of an important and, and, and strong contribution there. So in this case, in the city of Wageningen, Wageningen has a covenant on food waste linked to the Climate, uh, climate Act. Of course, many cities in the world and in Europe have now a pact on climate change. 
all want to be carbon neutral. I will say you cannot do that just by looking at energy and logistics. You need to incorporate food into your system. Maybe the food is not produced there, but the impact of the food is huge. 30% of greenhouse gases, 80-90% of water use is connected to the producing of food. So if you waste it in your cities, that could be an important role, but we have to look at the measurement how to incorporate that. So here we see a pact of the local municipalities, of the entrepreneurs, of a franchisor of the supermarket, all very proud like, we've done this. We have created an aisle, the first in the world, giving access to the good quality of products to the normal, the regular customers. So like 10,000 a week. But this for us is a living laboratory, so we do research applied research on what's the consumer acceptance, what's the best positioning, what are the type of products that go well, and that's typically what a city can do. Support living laboratories. Thinking from this global goal, there's not one driver. You have to understand the drivers, that's also applied to the, to, to the citizens, to the cities, to the regions. And it could be money, it could be ecological impact, it could be social uh, aspects, but Mostly it's also related to appreciation of the value of food. We have this big goal, but we have to make it come into action. But the figures talk to itself, but on the other hand, we need better figures. We need to understand how much food is wasted in your cities by your consumers, but also at the national scale, what companies waste. We are not there yet that we have good figures, and there is still a block in transparency. Not many really are willing, if they have the figures, to share that. That's something we are working on a long time. But this is, in general, the overview, first time published in 2015, of how much food is wasted in Europe. For the first time, built on a harmonized framework with agreed frameworks on definitions, destination, etc. And if you look at it, 70% of the food waste of the 88 million tons is downstream. So it's at household level, retail, or food service, so in direct contact with the consumers in your cities. And of course, there's also waste more on the loss side of it. I focus today on the waste side. Also, the impacts on greenhouse gas are significant, 6%. And an equivalent of 22, 25% of the food that is produced in Europe is wasted somewhere. So it's quite significant, as we already know. Part of the refresh program that I have the privilege to coordinate is look how can we build at national or regional uh, level the coalitions of the willing and what we so-call voluntary frameworks for action. Building on a mechanism of voluntary frameworks, led by most of the time companies that show their commitment to be transparent about what they do, about the actions and the monitoring it, supported by governments, NGO, knowledge institutions and other important stakeholders. But crucial is the role of the companies in this. But this project is not only about doing research and being a theoretical framework, it's also about bringing the stakeholders together, because we need to do that. We know there's lots of solutions, but we need many solutions. But how do we make it happen that we can connect and accelerate those solutions that are fitted on hotspots and that everybody agrees? And the most challenging things are those where we need change of regulations, maybe. Change of legal frameworks to get rid of perverse incentives in the system. That's the more systemic approach that it needs. But how do we do that? Fact-based, based on evidence, based on research, but also in interaction with all the different stakeholders. But also using the momentum of young people that are more, what we see, taking care and more interested in contributing to a better system. How can we use them and their new ways of communication to create awareness, to see that solutions that have, have potential impact can be created and scaled up? So here we have the commissioner, European commissioner, Vitenis Antiochitis, who's a personal champion and wants to really, and he's in the last term of his, his, his period, really wants to set things on that we create the momentum and the move for change. Together with discussion on how can we change legislation in Europe that the 20 million tons of food that's now going into anaerobic digestion or even incineration can be kept in the supply chain. But we need change of regulations for that. That's also what we do in our work to make that happen. Moving to the local coalition, the national coalitions. We work in five countries, the Netherlands, Germany, Hungary, Spain and China. All, all setting up and 
making sure that we have platforms that can accelerate and move beyond the point where they are now, all in different stages of maturity. I dare to say, but I'm not completely independent, that the Netherlands is the first to move to the next stage in transition. Coming with an agreement where companies take the lead, 80% of our task force is companies. With an important supporting role of the government, these knowledge institutions and the NGOs. But 80% is companies. And they can only join if they're serious committed. Committed to three things. To the target, to transparency, so they report to us their data and to taking actions and showing the progress on the actions. And we see that it works. And we have companies that are the front runners from the whole supply chain, from those that are involved in the, in the, in the breeding and the genetics, to retailers, food service, also waste management companies. But it's the front runners. So it's also those that think about new business models. Let me show me some, some examples later. But it starts with a real commitment, it starts with a good agenda, and it starts with the budget to make things happen. And that's what we agreed on in this task force. But it's also a top-down, bottom-up process. So the companies build together the agenda for the future for halving food waste in the Netherlands, it's one of the first countries in the world, in 2030. So we have only 11 more years to go. That means we have to find in the Netherlands one million tons of food that's currently going to waste to keep it in the food supply chain. And that sounds like a huge challenge, and it is. We're building on roadmaps where we can see where is the potential and what is needed, what are the hotspots. We have the confidence that we can do so, but it will ask for some very significant changes. Focusing on four different areas, but let me first start with this principle of the food use hierarchy. We always say prevention comes first.